Welcome, collectors. In today's Diecast Emporium review, we are finally getting a chance to review the Diecast Masters Highline Series 150th scale Cat 352 Ultra High Demolition Hydraulic Excavator. This model, from conception to reality, has taken just about two years, and I gotta tell you personally, I could not be more happy that it is finally here. As with all Highline Series models, it comes in the collectible metal tin. As you can see on the side, there is a nice rendering of the model inside. The item number is 85663. If we take a look at the top of the metal tin, you can see that there is another picture of the real 352 demolition excavator at work tearing down a building. If we move the box around to the back, we can see two more photos that show us the two possible configurations that are available in this set. Over here you have the excavator configuration and over here you have the demolition excavator configuration. This photo shows us the real 352 parked up and it also has the stand with the other boom on it. Last but certainly not least, right here smack dab in the middle, we have the machine dimensions and operational specifications. If that's something that interests you, please, by all means, pause the video right now and read that. But for the rest of us, let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed and take a look at what is inside. So, the first part of unboxing any of the Diecast Masters Highline Series models is opening up the tin, as you can see here. Now, there is quite a lot of items packed inside this metal tin. So, the first two things out of the box are... Two instructional sheets. This one shows us how to properly install and remove the bucket. If we open it up, it shows us the correct working angle of the UHD boom. This one over here shows us the correct positions of the body and the undercarriage. The second instructional sheet shows us how to mount with screws the demolition boom onto the excavator. Opening it up, it reveals the correct installation of the UHD and retrofit boom onto the stand, how to remove the demolition attachments. Over here it shows us that two different work tools are included with this set. We have the MP332 concrete cutter jaw, we have the MP324 demolition jaw, and lastly this shows us how to attach those on each of the respective booms. The last piece of paperwork included with the set is the 2021 Diecast Masters catalog, which has all of the up-to-date model releases for this year. Removing the top piece of foam rubber reveals the demolition UHD boom, which is a mostly all diecast component. Next, we have a bag of small parts, which include your pins, screws, and... Those little black plastic pieces are used to lock the cylinder in place if you want to put it in a display case. We also have a pointer tool which helps open up the opening parts on the excavator. And we have our operator figure should you want to insert him into the cab. We also have the other attachment. Next we'll go down to the bottom piece of foam rubber. We have our stand. We have our excavator boom, and last, but definitely not least, sitting very cozy and safely in the foam rubber, we have our 352 excavator. So we've got a lot to cover in this review, so let's just get straight into it. Let's start off with the boom stand. You insert this silver piece right here and lock it in with two provided black pins. You will need to slightly adjust these two yellow pieces, depending on which boom you're planning on storing on the stand. So for sake of the review, let's put the excavator boom on it. Once you have the silver stand locked in as seen here, you will then line up the excavator boom little notches here on both sides with the two stands and simply drop it in as seen here. There you go. Now you have your boom resting safely on the stand. If you want to, you can lock this further with two small silver locking pins, but as you can see, it's not necessary to do it because it will sit there safely without the need for those small locking pins. That's the stand and the excavator boom.
let's now transition to the 352 excavator itself. This model has a tremendous amount of functionality and detail associated with it. If you want to, you can take the top portion of the cab off to insert the operator figure, drop them in, and put them inside the operator's seat. You can adjust him as you see fit, and then place the top of the falling objects protection cab and click that back in. Next, on this side there are three opening panels, which you can open with the provided pointer tool. And opening those is very rewarding because there's a fair amount of detail associated and it is different depending on which panel that you open. There are three on that side and there is one more on the right side of the machine seen here. The last opening panel is on top which is an opening engine panel and if the light hits it just perfectly you can see the cat logo that is on the motor inside. Another working feature of the 352 excavator is once it's on site, you can extend the undercarriage and the tracks by sliding it out. And this better helps disperse the weight of the boom and excavator on site. So that's how you do that. Obviously, the metal tracks will roll as they are spring loaded, and they tend to work a lot better on a surface with some friction. You can also rotate the 352 360 degrees, and the mechanism works quite well. Okay, let's attach the demolition boom to the machine. To do this, you use two of the larger screws that are provided, and they go here and here. You simply drop in the top portion right there, and then you would also fasten the hydraulic lines that drop into the connection point there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video, make sure that these are the screws are in there correctly, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the functionality of the Ultra High Reach Demolition Boom. After taking the necessary time to make sure that the screws are lined up correctly, you don't necessarily have to fully thread the screws all the way through. In fact, I would recommend that you don't do it, because every time that you line up the screws with the boom, you are going to move some paint and potentially thread out the holes, which again, I would not recommend doing. So just make sure they're tight enough to safely hold the boom onto the excavator. Now you can see that the excavator is in a parked or a transport mode. Let's carefully raise the boom up. Now the instructions tell you to make sure that the boom is at a 90 degree angle before you extend anything outward. So now we have the boom as high as it will go and as close to a 90 degree angle as possible. Then we'll move the next segment out. And as you can see, at this point, there is very little to no deflection. Now, those two plastic pieces that I showed you in the bag when we were going over accessories, they look a whole lot like this. You can, if you want to, if you're putting this in a display case and leaving it there for years on end, you can lock the booms like this by placing them here and here. There are two provided, and that just gives you extra assurance that it's not going to deflect or bend down over time. Going back to the excavator boom, as you can see, the machine does not tilt forward or lean under load. And you can bring this down to one of several positions and it will hold that position. You can rotate the demolition attachments and they will also open and close just like this. This is a perfect machine to use in a demolition diorama or display. And it's definitely been worth the wait to have a proper 150 scale Caterpillar demolition excavator. So now that you've seen the functionality of the demolition attachments and demolition boom, we will take our last break. When we come back, we'll see what this machine looks like with the excavator attachment on the 352. Now we have the excavator boom attached to the model. This mounts to the 352 in very much the same way as the ultra high reach demolition boom does, but you can mount it in either this position or in a cranked boom position at this hole. Again, it mounts very much the same way with the addition of screws. Another cool feature of the 352 excavator that you can use with either the excavator or more realistically with the ultra high reach boom is you can angle the cab upwards to give the operator a better field of view. 
But now that we've got the excavator boom on, let's take a look at its functionality. As you can very plainly see here, it is in a parked or a transport mode, and it will fold up very nice and tight for a low boy load if you wish to put this on an American low boy. Now, let's open it up and see how it looks for some digging poses. And I'm happy to report that every aspect of this boom works quite well. It is strong enough to hold any pose that you want to set, again, without fully tightening the screws. It will also dig well beneath itself at a pretty darn aggressive digging angle, as seen here. So that will do it for this review of one of Diecast Master's keynote models for the 2021 model year. The Diecast Masters Caterpillar 352 Ultra High Reach Demolition Excavator in 150th scale. In most aspects, this is an excellent model. It is not an inexpensive model, but bear in mind you are getting essentially two different excavators for the price of one. It is incredible that it comes with two mostly diecast booms, an excavator stand, two different demolition attachments, and it will fit either your dirt collection or your demolition collection perfectly. As always, I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, take care and be safe. I'll see you in the next review.